Hey, what's going on guys? Clutch here. Welcome back to County Line. That's right. We're back on County Line. We're heading into town for a bit here. We're going to take a quick look at a couple of things. Well, I bought something. I bought some. Let's grab some lunch first though. Uh, Applebee's. Let's grab some lunch from Applebee's. Love it. We haven't been here yet. Get a quick bite to eat before we take off for the day. We'll just pull in right in here. Looks good to me. Let me see if I can double park somebody in. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, we'll drop the truck off. Perfect. Looks good. Let's go in and grab some lunch. And then we're gonna head over to the shop. I got uh, got some stuff to go take a look at. Yeah, we've got something we've already purchased. It's gonna be good today, guys. Looking forward to this. You guys already know what it is, but uh, let's go in, get some lunch, and we'll get to work. All right, hit or patter. Clutch simulations. All right. So that was a decent lunch. I don't know, what do you guys think of restaurants like Applebee's? You know what, I don't mind it for the most part. I don't know, it's all right. Um, you know what, get a good beef dip in me, I'm pretty happy. I'll take a beef dip pretty much any day of the week and uh, yeah, that'll make me a happy camper. Is this the turn? No, no, next one, next one. Uh, anything with uh, a little bit of a steaky taste, some roast beef? Yeah, I'm definitely in. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, our cattle, yeah, we haven't uh, really touched our cattle much lately. We haven't done any selling of cattle. We're just kind of letting that kind of grow for a bit, so. But that being said, guys, well, we've got lots of other ways of making money right now. In fact, we're not having any kind of problems making money. We've got money coming in on so many different revenue sources that, well, I've kind of gone nuts here. And, well, today we're buying something new. And you guys already know what that is. Yeah, it's something to help us with the manure. That manure problem I've been running into lately that I want to deal with. And uh, just to kind of help me load things quicker, make things a little bit faster. And I didn't want to do it with, well, that 5 Series, we've been working it to the bone right now. And I think we can give it a bit of a break. So, what we picked up, well, you can just see it right ahead here. That's right. That is right. Another John Deere wheel loader, or front loader. I always call them front loaders. I don't know why. Anyways, I digress. Here we go. We got it. Nice. Look at this. The 544 John Deere. Now, yeah, it's a reskin, I know. But look at it. It looks so good, isn't it? Now, this here model has been updated. We've got an upgraded engine on this. It's, uh, I believe it's 230 horsepower on this. I think our price tag was around the $270,000 mark. Up front here, well, we've got a massive bucket. This thing is an 8,000 liter bucket. It's so big. That's really going to make some quick work of loading some of these trailers. And then we can scoot around back. Look at the paint job on this. What do you guys think of that? It's like a metallic green. I think it looks pretty darn good. Pretty good. I, I'm really digging this, uh, this paint scheme. Not bad. So we've got the big bucket. We've got the bigger engine. Yeah, I'm happy with this. This is going to do us a lot of good out on the farm. Uh, the only thing is we're not going to drive it home. We're going to load this up on the trailer. All right, so we've got our Kenworth W900. Uh, it's all set up. We've got our flat deck trailer. Should be good to go. We should just go be able to pick this all up. Look at the amount of hours we've got on this. 11, 11 hours already. That's not bad. Um, we need to get some fuel, it looks like, as well. You know what? I should have filled this up back at the farm. But you know what? The price is are the same and we got a fuel station right here why not just pull in here i think we've we've got room looks like we should have enough more more than enough room i think yeah that looks all right that'll be just perfect awesome um we're gonna be kind of blocking it with the trailer but yeah that sounds like an issue not really an ish me i would say um yeah there we go let's fill a little bit of this up and we'll see how much this is gonna take Oh, I didn't mean to stop that. 74 bucks. Yeah, we definitely need more than more than that. <laughs> we definitely need more than 74 bucks in this. Let me get this thing filled up um, a little bit better than that. All right, so well, we'll see what else. The maintenance on this truck actually hasn't been bad. I haven't had to fix this truck at all yet, but the other ones, not so much. Ooh, look at this. We guys have the gauges work. I think maybe we should go talk to the attendant. I don't think that gauge is, is quite working properly. Oh, there we go. All right, so... 500 bucks, 70 bucks, uh, so another yeah, 600 and some. All right, it was a bit more than I was really expecting to pay for fuel, but that's not bad. I guess, what, is that average for a diesel pickup or a diesel semi? What would be a full tank on your average diesel semi, I wonder? Now, with today's prices, I have no idea what the sell price is right there. They don't give you a, a, a liter per, or a, a price per liter or per gallon there. It'd be nice to have an idea, but we actually had to pay for our fuel there, just, just not a price that pops up. I'd be curious to see if it was that. Anyways, I digress. Let's go pick up this uh, wheel loader and get back to work here. So we've got lots of stuff I want to get done on the farm today. And, uh, well, the first thing we need to do is pick up our new front end or wheel loader. See, I'm always calling it a front end loader. I don't know why it's just something stuck in my head. 
I think that's what we always call the back home. So, anyways, let's go get into the shop here. They've got it all suited up, ready to go for us. All we got to do is pick it up. We've even got the keys for it right now, which is nice to have. Let's get this around the corner here and just pull on in. This trailer that we've got, this flat deck trailer, this is not something I'm all that familiar with. This is an interesting way of dropping this down and then you just release and you're good to go. Uh, it's a, definitely a different design. It's super easy to use. It's nice and convenient to load up, but it's just a little bit strange. All right, let's fire this bad boy up. Jump on in. First startup. All right. I love it. Oh, it's so good in here. This is a nice cab. Let's get our bucket off the ground. And let's go and see if we can load this up on the trailer. Oh, it's never easy to drive these from this angle. I can't see anything up there. Where's my trailer? <laughs> Where is my trailer? Um... I think I'm, am I, I think I'm straight. Let's just hit the ramps a little bit. Um, hit the bucket a little higher. Yeah, there we go. I think, oh man, I just can't tell if we're straight. And when you spin the wheel back and forth, you never really t can tell where your wheels are sitting. I'm gonna need to practice this for a little bit. This thing is gonna be a bit of a beast to drive. I'm getting kind of used to the tractors, but yeah, this is, all right, well, we're, I think we're, we're centered. That's not bad, okay. We're good, we're good, we're good. Just move this bucket down a bit, flatten it out. I think that's okay, isn't it? Nope, nope, we can flatten that way out. Yeah, let's get that right down nice. There we go, that should be a little bit better, I think. Close enough. Yeah, that'll work. I got the front wheels off the ground a bit there, but that's that's totally okay. Let's jump back in the truck, get this loaded right back up. Now, would it be this easy to load up? I don't think so. I'm sure we'd have to get out and put some pins in, but I do like just be able to back it in like that and say like you're good to go. Let's take a quick look at this setup. Oh, right. Oh, yes. It's so good. Um, I'm yeah. I'm excited about this. This is a nice looking track or nice looking piece of equipment. Pretty happy to have this on the farm, guys. This has been a long time coming. All right, let's get going. Back to the farm. All right, back at the farm. Everything looks like it's happening the way it needs to out here. Everything is going on. We got our new front end loader. She is good to go. Wheel loader. You know what I mean. Uh, check out the lights. Lights worked. Perfect. I didn't check those back at the shop. I probably should have checked those out then. <laughs> well, we're good to go. Let's get this thing back there. Now, like I said, this is going to be primarily for, well, moving manure around. That is our main number one task for this. We'll probably use it for a couple of other things here and there, but really, in the grand scheme of things, guys, I need to use this for moving manure. Um, it was becoming a daily chore for me. I need to move maneuver so much manure in and out around these cow pens uh, between, well, we've got a couple things. Number one, we've got a well, little orchard. We've also got, you know, the, the new compost area. It's a good thing these cows are making so much manure because I'm starting to get a lot of projects that need it. Like, well, there we go. You can see our new compost pen, our compost machine. Let's take a quick look here. What do we got for compost in here currently? Uh, what is that? 30, 27,000 liters. We got 20, 42,000 liters of manure already in it. So you can see I've been working away quite a bit with this. And, well, this has been the problem I've been noticing. Um, yeah, between the orchard and this compost machine, trying to get the manure I need into the farm. It's been a constant battle. Now, <laughs> that little 5 series we're using to load this up with, it was taking us a considerable amount of time. Now, let's see if I can get this get going. Oh man, look at this. Even this, oh man, even a front end loader or a wheel loader is struggling with this much manure. I didn't think I'd be able to get those back wheels off the ground. That is incredible. Let's get up the ramp. Come on, up the, up up the ramp nice there we go and dump oh no no stop i dumped it over the back of the bin i can't believe i dumped it whoops um that wasn't supposed to happen <laughs> uh, i never had that problem before so that's the first time that's happened to me oh well we'll we'll deal with that later that's not a big problem but like i was saying the little five series we could probably get rid of this ramp now actually um yeah we'll leave the ramp it's not really necessary, but it's nice to be able not to have to lift the bucket as high, especially considering the problems I'm already noticing we're having. Holy, like that's that's considerable that that wheel bounce we're getting on the back there. But anyways, um, the five series. That's the main reason we had this ramp here, and it would take. Oh man, what's the size? It's just shy of two thousand liters. I think the bucket. Oh, get, holy smokes! Get back up there. Come on, get up there. I'm not having much luck with this, am I? I? Need to figure out how to drive all over again, apparently. 
Try not to dig this trailer too much. But it would take us a good... Oh, man. If it, so it's 25,000 liters into this trailer and 2,000 liters per trip. So, well, you do the math. That's 12 trips plus. Almost 13 trips, technically, I guess. Back and forth. Um, that's quite a bit of time. You're averaging, you know, 15 to 20 seconds per trip. Yeah, it definitely adds up just trying to load one of these trailers and then you've got to do that twice for the orchard at least per day and then you've got to do it oh man you could probably do it four times for that uh, compost maker so the amount of time that we're going to be saving by doing this um, what is it this is 8,000 liters we fill that up three times it's three times let's jump and take a look here see where we're at yeah okay so we're pretty much full there we could probably put a little bit more in if we wanted to but we do that three times, and then we're full. That's a lot better. That's going to save us quite a bit of time in a day, um, in the grand scheme of things. If you measure that all out. Uh, let's go dump this into our uh, our compost maker here. Actually, you know what? I could probably just use that and go bring the manure straight in with that big bucket, not even just bypass the trailer. That would be an option. I guess I could have done that. Oh, let's go back into the wall. Get it all the way up. Perfect. That 7810 has a lot better luck getting this trailer around than that little 5 series we got. Alright, let's go take a look at the uh, the numbers going up here. And what are we up to now? 62, 3,000. Wow, 63,000 liters of manure. That compost is going to go up every, what, 2,000 liters every hour. We haven't had to do any more diesel yet. We haven't had to worry about that. We got that one, we bought the diesel right when we uh, we opened it up and fired it up. But no, but since then. Anyways. We're going to be bringing this over to the apple orchard again. Let's go take a quick look and see what's going on over there. So the apple orchard, we were here yesterday. And you guys might remember that we actually sold all the apples we had. And look at what we got here already. 65,000 liters of apples is actually back here. It's been a little over 24, maybe close to 36 hours. We're back up to 65,000 liters of apples. Lots of compost, some water, and we've got fertilizer still in here working away. Actually, it's quite a bit, 79,000 and 74,000 of uh, compost and fertilizer, respectively. If I scoot around, you can kind of see our fertilizer there. It, there's a lot more we could fit in there. Anyways, the apples, guys, we made about 35,000 bucks off those apples yesterday. And we're already at the same amount that we sold. So we, that's actually not too bad. I was a little disappointed yesterday. But looking at it now, that's actually not all that bad. Hmm, interesting. Anyways, we've got our 5 Series sitting right here. Let's uh, let's jump into it. Oh man, we've been using and abusing this thing, haven't we? <laughs> oh man, I love this little tractor. I absolutely uh, love this thing. But man, it's uh, it's been getting used and abused. So we've got some work to do with it today. We've got some more work now. There's some more equipment I need to buy that I'm just not quite ready to do it quite yet. But it does need to happen very soon because we can't keep on abusing this little five series. Um, we need to do some fertilizing. We need to do some more fertilizing, and this is the only tractor that I can use that's going to do the fertilizing properly because it's the only one that I currently have that I could stick narrows on. That's the only tractor I have. Uh, everything else is stuck with the tracks now, or it's got wider tires. So, anyways, I'm stuck using the 5 Series for the time being. It it does the job. We've done it for two years in the past. It's worked, but it's not great. It definitely struggles. Uh, let's put this fork off here, and... Let go. Perfect. Nate, come on. Let, come on. Out. Oh, there we go. Anyways, uh, and drop our weight back over here. We've got this massive sprayer. Let's drop that there. Perfect. Um, this John Deere sprayer we got, it's actually not bad. It's pretty big. It's a pretty big size sprayer. Let's spin around inside the shop here. <laughs> it tight turns inside our shop. There we go. There's our sprayer. I mean, it looks like a normal, just regular connection, uh, rear connection sprayer. But this thing is pretty big, and it's been pretty useful for us so far. It allows us to, to do the work of a smaller or bigger sprayer without having to buy the big equipment. But at the same time, I need something else to tow this with, or maybe just... Oh, darn, I forgot the snow plows in there. Um, I'll go around the backside. Anyways. But we also need to put our narrows on this tractor, so we'll, we'll pull into the shop. We'll get the narrows on. Maybe we'll do a little bit of work with this tractor as well, get it ready to go. So it's funny that I was saying that we used and abused our 5 Series too much. Well, look, like I've over-abused it, guys. I don't know what happened. I think we broke a spring or some of the suspensions busted. I don't know what happened yet. Put the new tires on. They put the narrow tires on it that we've been storing. And it no longer holds the sprayer properly. I don't know what I did to this thing. But she's broken. 
I cannot get it to uh, to sit properly. We can't get those front tires down. The suspension is shot. Something's going on, and it's just not working for us. So, well, we're at a bit of a loss here. I don't know how I'm going to fix this yet, but I think we may be done with the 5 Series towing uh, or using the sprayer. So, um, I'm just going to have to leave this here, it looks like, and uh, put this back in the shop, and we'll see if we can figure out what's going on. I don't think it's going to work. I don't think we're going to have any luck with it. I just, it is what it is. So, oh well, I've had to make other arrangements. Now, let me just pull in here. We'll drop this in the shop and we'll uh, we'll get someone to look at that later on. Oh man, that's too bad. Anyways, we made other arrangements. Guys, I've talked to the shop. I gave them a call. I told them my problem and where I wanted to go and they had a perfect solution for me. Unbelievable solution. Look at this. We've got a John Deere 8100 series. And not just a normal 8100 series. This one's got some saddle bags, some saddle tanks. That's right. We've got some Demco saddle tanks. Uh, I think they're 250 gallon tanks on this as well. Now, this particular model, I think it's around 230 horsepower, I believe is what we got out of this. The 8100 series, uh, very bare bones as far as everything else goes. We got just normal narrow tires on it. But the Demco saddle tanks, I mean, that's that's awesome for what we're going to be doing with this. It's like it was designed for, well, what we need to do, hopefully. We got a 1,200 kilogram weight up front, I should mention as well. Let's fire this thing up. Nice looking cab. It's in really good shape, actually, for a used tractor. I mean, it's not brand new by any means, but... Uh, you know what? Not bad. So the purchase price on this is around 120000 I believe. We're just borrowing this. This is on a lease from us for uh, the spring here just so we can get a little bit of a test. We'll see if we like it. If we do like it, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll keep it. But for right now, we're just leasing it because we don't have the money to buy it. We just don't have the cash right now to do that. And I needed to test something anyways to find if it's going to work for us. So hopefully, hopefully this works. Come on, sit. There we go. All right, so, oh, even this is still struggling a bit. Yeah, it's still, it's still a little bit heavy for this track. I'm totally surprised. I thought for sure, oh, man, it's doing it, but it's not, even, it's, even, oh, man, I can't believe our 5 Series was actually able to handle this. That is unbelievable, considering this 8100 Series is still having some problems. Um, it, it can do it, but it's not fantastic. All right, let's go fill up these saddle tanks, and then we'll get over into the field. Holy, um, yeah. Pulling through the orchard and into, well, our massive field down here. I think we got canola planted here, I think. Anyways, it doesn't matter. We just need to fertilize. So let's drop this down, open this thing up. Now, this thing is huge as far as the width goes. It's, it rivals some of the larger uh, sprayers. I can't remember what the size is. 36 meters? Might be 36. It's it's one of the largest ones. I think it's the largest uh, rear mount sprayer you can buy, but it's uh, it's definitely a big one. That is for sure. And I don't I like using it, but guys, I am totally surprised right now that our five series was actually able to handle this. Now, the more I've been just checking this out, it's uh, it's kind of unbelievable that little 58 uh, 5085 could handle this sprayer. I mean, I know we struggled with it, but. I'm struggling with it right now with the 8100 series. And this tractor is at least twice that of that 58, uh, 5085. Now, let's see if I can just get around here without hitting that tree. Come on. Oh, into the bushes. It's okay. We're around. We're good. We're good. We're good. It's all good. It's all good. Now, this is a great opportunity for us to be able to try some equipment out to see if it's going to work for, well, our purposes. I think this is perfect. Now, the actual equipment, do I think it's perfect? Yeah, I'm on the fence on this one. It's close, but even right now, I feel like we should be able to do a little bit more with it. I think it's definitely struggling. We're going to find out at some point here on this field how it handles everything. But right now, I mean, we're down to 7 miles per hour, I think I just saw there. That's definitely not that the maximum speed that we should be able to go at while, while we'll do in the spring. Yeah, that's definitely a little bit lower. So, now there's a couple of different options. I think, I well, we've got the maximum amount of weight on the front. And that's where I'm noticing that front tire still does come off the ground when we first connected to it. We saw the front tires come off the ground there for a second. So we're, we still obviously don't have enough weight. Now, I don't think we have enough weight with any of the tractors I carry between the 7810, even that 80, uh, the 8530. I don't know how it even handles it. I think it struggled the one time we tried to use it as well. So that may not be an option. I don't know if maybe we put doubles on this. Would that help? I can't see that helping. That's not going to put the weight... Uh, in front of the center of gravity on this. It's just going to give us more traction on the rear tires. 
I don't know if it's, we have a great option for this, guys. I really don't. Maybe tw twins in the front? I don't think that's going to help either. I was just hoping that having fluid or liquid inside those front uh, Demco tanks was really going to be a big difference. And so far, it doesn't seem like it was that big of a difference. I think I'm still kind of screwed there. Oh, well. What do you do? So, this little hill that we kind of come up here, that ended up being a bit of a test for us. Now, the Demco tanks, guys, we're, what, 10% we've used? But that was nice. That just that little hill back there, you can kind of see coming back up here. We were down to about 5 miles per hour, I think, climbing that little hill. Yeah, it definitely slows us down to get up on top of this tiny little plateau, which is pretty minor in the grand scheme of things. Now, this is... There's not a lot of big hills here, at least. This farm has got fairly flat. I don't have to worry about that too much. Um, but the big thing is that all the tanks are nice to have because well, it's such a huge field. Uh, we use 10% of our, our fluid, our, our uh, herbicide, the fertilizer to get down here. So there's only 10%. We should be able to get through this field with the one tank. Anyways, it's not sure if we have the power. That's the only problem. It does seem to get it done, but we're, we're struggling a little bit for sure. But, well, I don't know. It, it might work. It's it's so hit and miss. I mean, we got it done with the 5 Series. Why not continue if we worked it with this one? Would it be that bad? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Um, we got enough money coming in that we can worry about this a little later on. We'll get this field done, and then we'll look at it once we have some more money. But I think we've got money enough money coming in that we could probably purchase something a bit better than this. I think. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Anyways... Hope you guys did enjoy this episode. If you did, don't forget to drop a like. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. But other than that, guys, I will see you guys next time. From County Line, this is Clutch. Over and out.